Cleaning business advice I wish I would have known sooner. You know, I remember when I started my first cleaning business and um, I wish somebody would have told me sooner that don't misclassify employees. Now that's a common mistake that a lot of cleaning business owners make, both in re residential and commercial. So what I mean by don't misclassify your employees, and I mean that is where you're supposedly hiring subcontractors to, to, to do the work for you, to do the cleaning, only to uh, realize that they are actually your employees. Now, many of us uh, had gotten poor advice when we first got started. All you do is just subcontract it. You know, that's all you do. You just hire people to, to, to do the work for you. You know, so I wish I would have known sooner that you can be misclassifying your employees by doing that. You need to make sure that you're hiring legal subcontractors. So, and that's in another video. Something else was that I wish I would have had uh, advice on is that there's a lot of salespeople out there, supply salespeople, that are dishonest. Yeah, that shouldn't be no surprise. You know, they're salespeople. So they're going to tell you what you want to hear just to make the sale. And that's very true. You know, they're going to try to meet their quota uh, for the month. But that's something that I that I experienced early, you know, in the business also. That uh, listen to my salesperson, you know, they're telling me that you know this piece of equipment would be fantastic, yada yada yada, you know, and then I spend a few hundred dollars for that piece of equipment, uh, only to find out that yeah, it's a piece of crap, you know, and it doesn't it doesn't work the way that they're claiming it worked. Um, so you know, keep that in mind. You know, uh, not all sales uh, sale, uh, supply house salespeople are are the same. You know, uh, the one thing that I learned over the years is that a lot of them don't really know our industry. Uh, they, they may know their product, but they don't know our industry. They've never been out in the field uh, and actually cleaned a building or cleaned an office, cleaned a medical center, you know, or did any of that stuff. Usually all they're, all they're getting is their, their training from their manufacturer's rep. They go in the back room in the warehouse and they spend a half hour on something, that's it. You know, this is how you use a piece of equipment and this, that, and the other. You know, they've never uh, stripped and waxed 10,000 square feet of floor. Um, so, something to keep in mind uh, when you're talking to, to your salesperson, just how much knowledge do they know about cleaning? You know, and are they being straight, straight up with you? You know, are they telling you the truth? Do you really need that piece of equipment? Is that a piece of equipment going to make you money? Uh, so, Think twice before you before you get out your wallet. Something else that I wish I would have known is that re relationships matter. Now, and what I mean about that is that um, you know you're you're cleaning for a company that has a property manager uh, and they're managing multiple properties, and uh, you, you know you're doing four or five uh, pieces of uh, properties for them, and um, then next thing you know that they, uh, you know, you've been, you've been servicing them for, for years, you know, uh, five, six years. And next thing you know, now they're going to make a change because a buddy of theirs has a cleaning company. Generally what will happen is that uh, you, you get a new uh, property manager come in. Uh, and that's typically when they'll pull that on you is that, uh, hey, I've got a buddy over here that does cleaning. I'm going to hire them to take over these accounts. So that's what happens. So, you know, relationships matter. And I found out again in my, in my first company that no matter how strong of a relationship you think you might have, um, some people will fool you. And, you know, and that's exactly what happened in this case. Um, you know, it was really a drag. You know, the, the account was probably worth $50,000. And, uh, and uh, you know, there's uh, five, yeah, five buildings. Um, and... Uh, but anyway, um, you know, so I lost those, lost those, uh, uh, those buildings uh, to this property manager's buddy. And, uh, you know, that's, I guess that's the way it goes. But here's the flip side of that is uh, a couple of weeks later, I've uh, picked up an account that was worth $250,000. So, uh, you know, don't dwell on the past, uh, but just keep in, keep in mind that relationships matter. So the stronger you can have your relationship, and, and whenever you have a new property manager come in, be prepared for some of that because some of that stuff can happen and it will happen. So be prepared for it. So relationships matter. 
Something else I would wish I would have known is that you know don't overpromise, uh, which I never did. You know I always underpromised and overdelivered. Uh, that's just just my style, you know. But you know make sure that you don't do that. You know make sure that you don't uh, tell people that you can do all this. And you know it's common for uh, cleaning business uh, owners or their salespeople to go out and sell. You know hey we can do all this. We can do this this and this. You know and really load on load on the, the value uh, only to find out that when the when the operations gets there and starts cleaning this building there's no way in heck that they can get all that stuff done you know so typically the salesman will over promise services just to get the account so uh, you know you got to be careful of that so uh, that's something uh, you know I like I said I never I never did that myself but it, it is something that's common uh, something else that I wish I would have known is that uh, knowing your market uh, pricing. So doing your market research is very important. So you know when I first started my business back in the 80s, you know uh, I never thought of that. You know I never thought about doing market research to find out what my competitors were at on price, what kind of services they offered, and so on and so forth. So you know once I knew about that, well it only made sense that I should know that. I should know what my competition is doing. You know, so that's what I did. Once I learned that, I knew that I was in the, you know, in the marketplace. I was priced reasonably. You know, I wasn't the cheapest and I wasn't the highest, but you know, I, I still made a very nice profit. So uh, keep that in mind. You know, so make sure that you know your market pricing. Do your market research. Now the other thing is too that which goes hand in hand with that is uh, I wish I'd have known my number sooner. Uh, that's something that if you know me, I keep on preaching that all the time to all of our members on the janitorial store and my house cleaning biz. You have to know your numbers. And what I mean by that, it, it's all of your numbers, your production rates, you know, your expenses, your taxes, you know, all these things. You have to know what those numbers are, you know, and what those numbers are, how do they equate to a percentage, you know, of the job. Because we have to know that if, if in order for us to price a job and price it profitably, we have to know our numbers. And if we're not, then we're only guessing if we're going to make, make a profit. And I tell you what, there's a lot of cleaning business out there, uh, owners out there that exactly are not doing that. They don't know their numbers. They don't know if they're making a profit on, on the job or not. So, so that's something that you, you definitely got to know. And then uh, the, the last thing that I'm going to share is, uh, I wish I'd have known this sooner too, because um, over the years, uh, again, in my first cleaning company, uh, you don't want to be friends with your employees. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because you uh, you let down your guard, uh, so you you cross the line from employee to friend, and you start letting down your guard, and uh, you know people will take advantage of that. So that's probably the thing that I wish I would have known sooner uh, is not to be friends with your employees. Uh, so, you know, and it took a few experiences for me to realize that, wait a minute, you know, I can't cross that line no more because exactly that, they'll take advantage of it. And uh, so, you know, that's what I stopped doing. Uh, you know, everybody, you know, I had respect for everybody. Uh, I just wasn't friends with them. I didn't go out to dinner with them. I didn't go out and, to, uh, and have drinks with them and things like that. You know, the, we just didn't do that. Um, but, uh, you know, I had respect for all my employees and my team. And, uh, you know, I helped them uh, uh, be successful in whatever they were doing, too. So, and that's what my focus was. It wasn't on, uh, I wasn't there to build friendships. You know, I was there to build a business and to, uh, you know, help my employees grow also. And that's what I did. So, but, you know, that's what I have. And, you know, those are some of the things that I wish I would have known sooner. Uh, uh, you know, some, I wish somebody would have gave me this advice sooner. So, uh, hopefully that you'll take this to heart. Think about it. Uh, because it, this here is some some very good stuff um, and uh, you know hopefully you like this and uh, again you're going to find much more information on the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com you know we've got a wealth of information on those sites um, you know on the uh, on the janitorial store we've been uh, creating uh, creating uh, content since uh, 2005 um, the my house cleaning business since 2009 so when you go there, you're going to be overwhelmed because there is so much content. There's so much information uh, that is so relevant today in 2020. So, uh, I'm Steve Hansen, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. So, 
Thanks for checking in today, and uh, we'll see you next time.